The 2004 Marvel Legends Series 7 by Toy Biz. The 2018 Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure by Hasbro. The 2022 Marvel Legends Retro Card. And the 2023 Marvel Select by Diamond. With X-Men 97 teasing his return for Season 2, it's time to ask, which Ann Saba Nerf figure is the best fit for your display? Place your bets and stick around. It's time for a Versus of Apocalyptic Proportions. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. For the purpose of this discussion, I won't be including the Toy Biz Build-A-Figure because, frankly, it's in a completely different class of toy. It's also gigantic and doesn't exactly fit in frame. I'm also not going to be including Age of Apocalypse, only because it's a more specific look and I'm trying to keep things more general. Starting off with the packaging, and I don't actually have the box for the original Toy Biz version. He came in a plastic clamshell, but unlike later Legends, it had interesting character stats, while Apocalypse has as a simple bio. The first Hasbro release is a little bit trickier because as a Build-A-Figure he didn't actually have a box. Instead, bits of him were spread across seven boxes like Voldemort. Eight if you count Archangel, but we'll get there in playability. As for Select, it comes on that tried and true blister car that Diamond's been rocking since 2003. There's a pretty creepy picture of him down here, a product shot on the side, more product shots on the back, as well as a bio, and credit where it's due, it gives the credit. The retro card of course comes on a retro card. It's big and purple, and I've already covered it more extensively in its own video. In fact, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually filmed these shots the same day I reviewed it. And while those other packages might have some things going for them, do they have these really cool apocalypse quotes? I didn't think so. Since all of them have predisposable packaging, or in the case of the Build-A-Figure, no packaging at all, for packaging, this round goes to Retro Card. Moving on to presentation, and Toy Biz stands at seven and a quarter inches. The two Hasbro Marvel Legends are 8, and Select towers over all of them at 9. From the top, and the face on the Toy Biz one always kind of reminded me of a monkey, mainly because of the gap between the nose and the mouth, and also just the lack of human-like lips. That said, I did find this panel from a comic, which is a perfect match, so either this figure's based on that, or someone based their art on this figure. The Build-A-Figure and Retro card share the same head, which is a vast improvement. I do like that darker, colder gray of the Build-A-Figure, but the Retro card is elevated, by extra shading. Select has a very similar design. Also, don't mind the scuff on the chin. That one's actually my fault. On its own, there's actually only one thing about this head I don't like. It's way too big for this body. Growing up in this was always my mental image of Apocalypse. Broad shoulders, cinched waist, and a smaller head. You know, like the old Toy Biz Build-A-Figure I'm not talking about. That larger head makes him look kind of gangly and unimposing. More like this Apocalypse. On the subject of Toy Biz, and in contrast to the eventual Build-A-Figure, the Series 7 release is a bit on the squat side. While it's painted nicely, they did add a lot of extraneous detail, especially all the panel lines and rivets on the appendages, but I'd be a liar if I said I don't sometimes miss this level of paint work on a Marvel Legend figure. Additionally, going back to this graphic, it looks like it might have been based on a comic design. Either way, the nice thing about Apocalypse is that because of the nature of his powers, you can configure him in just about any way and he still looks cool. Eh, uh, most of the time. Not surprisingly, the Build-A-Figure and Retro card share a lot of parts and have similar builds. There's definitely a bit more detail on the Build-A-Figure. Note the extra rivets and texture around the belt. And I'm always a sucker for metallic blue. The details on the Retro card have been streamlined to give it a more animated series feel. This one has a new torso, as well as a more 80 slash animated series purple and blue theme. I particularly appreciate the matte finish on that. Going back to Select, and all the broad strokes are there, the collar and the shoulders, the piping and the ribbing, and the hoses, which have been given a nice metallic finish. Other accents like the boots and gauntlets have been given a nice metallic accent as well. Additionally, there's extra shading all over. The only thing that holds me back on this one are the proportions. And since I know you're wondering, yes. Yes, you can put the Hasbro head on this body. And boy, howdy, does it make all the difference. Just be careful swapping them, because that's how I chip the chin. Undoctored and unaltered, though, and I have to say, I like the look of the Build-A-Figure best. The face has more personality, the proportions are better, and I love the metallic and marbleized finish throughout. Personal preferences aside, though, and between the sculpted and especially painted details, objectively, a lot more care and effort went into this 
one. For presentation, this round goes to select. Moving on to posability, and this should be one of the more interesting rounds. Especially since Marvel Select is contractually limited in how many points of articulation they can have, and Toy Biz tended to overdo it. From the top, an Apocalypse's giant collar already gets in the way. The base of his neck is particularly vulnerable, so it makes sense that it's heavily armored. Of these three, Toy Biz and Retro Card have the best up, and the Hasbro figures must be geese because they have the best down. <laughs> As for Select, in this end, Sabiner can't really look up or down, but he does get really good tilt. Moving on down, and Toy Biz can only raise his arm about 45 degrees with Select just under 90. The two Hasbro figures reach 90, however, with the Build-A-Figure being just ever so slightly higher. Otherwise, in moving down, everybody has a bicep swivel and single-jointed elbows. Not only that, but none of them can bend even 90 degrees. To Marvel Select's credit, though, he does get additional elbow swivel. At the ends of the arms in the Hasbro and Marvel Select figures have wrists that can swivel and hinge. Toy Biz, however, can only swivel, but has extra articulation for the thumb, index finger, and these three digits. I'm assuming they grouped them that way so that Apocalypse couldn't make any obscene gestures. While I'm here and moving in the middle, all Toy Biz can really do is swivel, and instead of an ab crunch, he has this really weird diaphragm. It doesn't allow him to really hunch forward or back, or for that matter, do much of anything. The two Hasbro figures have ab crunches and waist swivels. They can arch back this far, which despite being different torsos, are fairly equivalent. Note that the retro card stomach sculpting stops though, and they can hunch forward this far, which again is pretty equal. Marvel Select has a diaphragm joint and a swivel waist. There isn't any meaningful forward or back with that diaphragm, so I don't really know why they bothered. You don't even really get much in the way of tilt. You can kind of twist though, but that's what the waist swivel's for. Below the gigantic A belt buckles and the Hasbro and Select figures have ball jointed hips. Toy Biz has a swivel hinge similar to the shoulder. While I can raise his leg this high, it unfortunately won't stay there. As for the Hasbro figures, and they can kick this high, with Select surprisingly having the highest kick of the bunch. Additionally, Select and the Hasbro figures have thigh cut, whereas Toy Biz has a swivelly peg in the thigh similar to the bicep cut. Moving down and Select only has single jointed swivel knees, the swivel making up for the lack of boot cut. Everyone else has double jointed knees with Hasbro bending this deep. As for Toy Biz, even though it has this really deep cut, this was the deepest bend I was able to get out of it, even after giving it heat. Unfortunately, I tried a little too hard and the leg snapped off. I got mine loose, and it looks like it had already been broken and re-glued before. I am the rock of the eternal shore. Crash against me and be broken! Oh. To Toy Biz's credit though, he does have toe articulation, as well as a little bit of hinge, and not so much pivot as much as wobble. The two Hasbro figures have ankle balls that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. Select, however, can only hinge and pivot. Normally, the hyper articulation of Toy Biz takes an articulation round, but not this time. For posability, this round is a tie between the two Hasbro legends. Moving on to playability, and one of the coolest parts of Apocalypse is his ability to shapeshift into different weapons. So naturally, all Toy Biz gave theirs was a comic book and a display base. The Build-A-Figure is an interesting story, though, because his accessory didn't come with him. His came with Archangel. That accessory would be this really cool claw. Not only can it swivel, but the clamps can open and close. I crush your head! Thanks to all the reuse, the retro card version really benefited in the accessories department. Not only does he have these open hands, he also has the fist the Build-A-Figure came with, a pretty sweet interchangeable arm cannon. An arm cannon, by the way, with peg holes that'll accommodate blast effects if if you have them, and a more stoic alternate head. In terms of accessories though, Select has the mother load. No alternate head unfortunately, but in addition to his open hands, this Apocalypse also has a pair of alternate fists, his very own claw. No articulation on this one, but that spike's pretty menacing. I crush your head! He's also got an alternate morning star, and drill baby drill! Similar to the clamp, it doesn't do anything but look cool, but look cool, it does. Does. To answer your unspoken question, yes, you can put the Morning Star on your Hasbro figures. But playability is more than just interchangeable parts and other accessories. It's also about how well your figures play with others. Starting things off, and here we have Cyclops. Marvel Legends is from the Dark Phoenix 2 pack. And then of course the tall one is Marvel Select. I chose these two because when doing a select comparison, 
then I do like the characters to match. That being the case, and here we have giant-sized X-Men number one versions of Storm. In fairness, it is the costume she's wearing on X-Men 97, so what's old is new again. Still, it really highlights how far Select has to go before they give us a complete version of a single era of the team. I don't really display my Selects, though, so if I'm going to use this Apocalypse, it's going to be with Legends anyway. That said, and here we have a couple of Tiger Stripe Wolverines. Legends is from X-Men 97, which is my current go-to. It pairs great with this more animated style Apocalypse. With the recently updated Marvel Select Captain America, though, I wouldn't mind if maybe Diamond gave Wolverine another whirl. Next up, and here we have Jim Lee Rogue. This confirms my earlier statement about what a mishmash Marvel Selects X-Men are. I do have the 97 version, I just haven't reviewed it yet. Who knows, maybe you'll see it in an upcoming Versus. Of course, where there's Rogue, Remy LeBeau isn't far behind. The Select version is particularly tall, so I don't think he's going to work with anything but Select. Though I suppose if you had to, you could get away with this one. Otherwise, for your Select display, this is definitely going to be the way to go. Being a larger character himself, Colossus makes for an interesting comparison. You're definitely not going to be able to mix and match the Bath version with Marvel Select. Which version of Colossus do you like better? Sound off in the comments and let me know if that's a Versus you'd like to see. On that note, and for a couple of recent additions to my collection, and here we have the Toy Biz and Marvel Select versions of Nightcrawler. I can't remember if I've ever mentioned it before on the channel, but Nightcrawler is my favorite member of the X-Men. I do have the 97 version and we'll be looking at him soon, and the fact that I just picked these two up should be a hint at what that video is going to be. Alas, I don't have Cable. I'm actually really more of a Roku guy myself. But for one other mutant synonymous with Apocalypse, and here we have Archangel. They did just come out with a new fluffy winged version of Angel, which I'll be looking at sometime soon. There's also a Marvel Select Archangel, but I haven't decided if I'm going to pick him up yet or not. For a relative scale comparison, here are just a couple of our Apocalypses with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here's everyone with Stealth Iron Man. Wait a minute, I'm Dark Metallic Blue. Am I an Apocalypse? I don't see anybody choosing Toy Biz to be their go-to Apocalypse. Leastways, unless you're displaying him alongside smaller 5-inch scale figures, in which case he actually does look pretty cool. As much as I like the Build-A-Figure and its proportions, it is held back by a lack of accessories. Ultimately, it really does come down to these two and which one you like best. If your collection leans more animated, this is probably the way to go. But between all the entertainment changeable parts and his ability to scale with any size X-Men. For playability, this round goes to Select. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. While you could risk getting the Toy Biz one loose for as low as $25, new in box it'll set you back between $60 and $80. After this experience though, new in box might just be the way to go. As for the Build-A-Figure, if you wanted to collect the entire wave new in box, that'll set you back about $360. But loose and complete with Capture Claw, you could get him on eBay by himself for about 80. As for the retro card and select, that's a pretty interesting situation. If you can find them at retail, they both go for around 40, but despite its articulation limits, Select is significantly larger and just plain comes with more accessories, making it the better bargain. Additionally, as of this recording, it's available on figurineforall.com right now for only $29.99. I'm not saying missing out on a deal like that would be the end of the world, but apocalypse pun. For price, this round goes to Select, who wins the battle 3-2-1-0. to, two to, one to zero. Agree? Disagree? Sound off in the comments to let me know which one you like best. While you're down there, let me know if you'd like to see a throwback video to the old Toy Biz Build-A-Figure. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.